Hi, in this video of C programming language, we are going to discuss about for loop. Basically, we may come across a situation where we want to iterate some set of statements continuously. So, for that, we have several controls right here like for loop, while loop and do while loop. So here, we will just focus on, upon the for loop. So when I said something like iteration means continuously going on for a process. So the question comes like how many times it means every time when I say something to be done in continuity, then it should be having some starting point and a finishing point means from when till then. So that is how we can write any particular loop. And even here in case of for loop, you will have to do such scenarios. We will go for the for loop when we know the number of iterations which we need to perform. So if you know like you want to execute a loop for 10 times, 100 times or 1000 times, as many as numbers you want. But if you know like how many times you are going to perform it, you should go for the for loop. Though it's not compulsory like if you're fine with the loops if you are good enough to handle the loops you can put any loop in any particular circumstances so let's see uh, the syntax the very common syntax of for loop like here after for you can have a parenthesis and after inside this you will pass three statements the first one is the initialization means the starting point Second one is the condition means that's the ending point and then after the increment or decrement. So for example, if I'm standing here and I want to walk out to some particular place, what I have to do, this is my starting point, that's my finishing point and I have to move. So this increment will actually update the value as by moving from legs, I will update my position. So if I want to start my loop from 1 and I want to go till 10, so I'll have to make an increment from 1, 2, 3 till 10. Similarly, it's not compulsorily increment. If you want to make it from 10 to 1, then you can also make it decrement, right? It all depends on your requirement. So here we can also see a flowchart which will tell us the uh, execution, how this execution will be done. So in the first time, only the initialization part is done, means the, any variable which is responsive for the execution of your loop will be initialized. And then before entering into the code, we will check the condition, which is the second thing, this is the second statement. If the condition is false, the loop will get terminated. Or I should say, as soon as the condition is false, the loop will get terminated whether it's on the first time or on the nth number of time. But if the condition is true, this code block, this conditional code will get executed and then we will jump to the increment means once every statement inside this uh, delimiter will get executed, we will jump to the increment part means the updation part. And again, after the updation, after the increment, we will check the condition before entering again. So this will happen as soon as the uh, condition is true, as soon as the condition is false, it will be terminated. Keep in mind one more thing, like all the three statements inside this for loop are optional, but you must pass these two semicolons. If you will not pass these semicolons, it will be a syntactical error. But you can anytime omit the initialization or condition or increment or if you will not pass anything, by default it will be an infinite loop. So let's see practically what all amendments we can perform while working with the for loop. So as here you can see, as always I have defined all the variables in the beginning. Here I just defined one variable i which I am using inside this loop. So as I already said, like for loop would be having three parts inside it. First one is the initialization where I initialize the value of i with 1. Next is condition which will be checked every time before getting entered into the loop body in execution. So here the condition is i should be less than or equal to 10. So the current value of i is 1 which is obviously less than 10. So this will satisfy the condition and it will enter it. 
but if I will not increase the value of i it will always remain 1 and the loop will keep on executing as an infinite loop so here what I have done here I have put the i plus plus means increment at the first time this increment part or the updation part will not uh, be executed but one time when the loop is done next time every time every time when you will this loop will be executed this will come to the here in the updation part which will increase the value by 1 from 1 it will become 2 again the condition will be checked like 2 is less than 10 it will come in here and then again the control will go to the updation so this is how it will keep on incrementing by 1 like 2 3 4 5 till 10 so here when you will execute it you can see the loop got executed from 1 to 10 and as soon as the value of uh, i becomes 10 it will again go here in the i plus plus which will make it 11 and here the condition will become like 11 is less than or equal to 10 obviously 11 is neither less nor equal to 10 so the condition will be false and the loop will be terminated similarly you can do that in a reverse direction like here I started i with 10 and the condition is like the value of i should be greater than or equal to 1 so i is 10 initially it will always be greater than 1 so it will satisfy the condition and the control will come inside the body all the statements which are here in the body will get executed and later again the control will go here in the updation part which will decrement the value of i to 1 so from 10 it will become 9 but 9 is still greater than or equal to 1 so it will execute by the time i is equal to 1 it will keep on executing 1 when i will become 1 and further i will decrease decrease the value means i plus plus it will make it 0 and 0 is not greater than or equal to 1 so as soon as the condition is false the loop will be terminated and here is how the output will look like like 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 apart from that if you want some more operations to do for example if i want to sum all the numbers from 1 to 10 then definitely i can define one more variable sum and i'll initialize it with 0 i'll consider that the initial value of sum is 0 and uh, every time when I'll get a value I will just add that in the variable that is sum so initially the value of sum is 0 sum plus i is 10 so 10 0 plus 10 is 10 so the new value of sum will be 10 next time when this loop will execute again i will become 9 sum is still 10 so 10 plus 9 is 19 new value of sum is 19 again i minus minus i will become 8 sum is having 19 i is 8 19 plus 8 is 27 so again the value of sum will be changed and it will be 27 and this is how it will keep on executing and when you will execute obviously i didn't print the value so outside the loop because i don't want the value of sum to be printed every time that is why i will come outside just you have to think what all statements you want to execute every time since i didn't want to print the value of sum every time i want that to happen at the end so for that i am doing it like sum percent d and here i will print the value of sum all right so let's execute it so here you can see sum is 55 as we know the number the sum of numbers from 1 to 10 is 55 so that is what we got here even if you want to sum only the or print only the even or odd number you can also put the conditions which we have already covered like if i mod 2 is equal to 0 that means it is the even number and then only i will allow these statements to get executed so let me set the indent so now i have put that inside a condition so only even numbers will get printed and be summed so 10 8 6 4 2 the sum is 30 so this is how you can start writing a for loop and you can decide like how many times you want to execute the loop and whatever you want to do you can simply put that all inside the loop body